Finally, something fun for the camper. I have done a stupid amount of work. I'm not crazy, but it has been a stupid amount of work. Had it not belonged to my friend Chad, it would have ended up as a wood cart around the farm or sold on Craigslist or, you know, marketplace. So, now that it's back in work in order, I want to lift it up and make it off-road capable. So, we're going to do three things today to do that. First of which, we're going to do a spring over. And what that is, is you have a spring over and a spring under, and that is your relative location of the axle to your leaf spring. So currently, it is a spring under, meaning this is your axle, and your leaf spring is underneath of it. So we're going to go ahead and change that to a spring over, which costs zero dollars. And that will give you a lift of the diameter of your axle plus the leaf spring for free. All you have to do is unbolt it, slide it to the other side, and bolt it back in place. It is literally that easy. Anybody can do this to basically any leaf sprung trailer, camper, or any tow behind that you have. Now you can't do this on a car or a truck because if you flip the axle over, the gears would then turn the opposite direction. And you also have gear oil in a truck rear end, and it's made to be lubricated one way and only one way. But on this, where we have greased bearings in our hubs, it doesn't matter. Upside down, right side up is the same to it. It does not know any difference. So the other thing that we're going to do, this thing has a four bolt pattern currently, and it's very hard to get wheels for these. You can get them, they're available, but it's kind of a pain, and I want to spec into a bigger tire. So in order to do this the most efficient way possible and give me my most options, I'm going to go from a four bolt pattern to a five on four and a half pattern which is a standard trailer pattern. And you would be amazed at what takes a 514 and a half. A Jeep Cherokee, a Ford Ranger, a Jeep Wrangler. Now the newer stuff does, I believe, have a bigger pattern, but uh, you know, all your XJs, your YJs, your TJs, all your old square body Rangers, 2006 or whatever and down, so you have tons of options as far as like 13 inch, 14, 15, 16, or as big as you want. And like I said, it is the standard trailer size hub. These are just trailer hubs that I got off Amazon. They were $70 for the pair. And if you go and buy a set of wheels that are only four bolt, you're gonna spend at least $100 on two wheels and I want a third for a spare. So, by switching to the 514 and a half pattern, I can get cheap, easy availability of any type of wheel that I want. And third, we're going to go ahead and put different wheels and tires on it. So these are actually some old uh, Gravely tractor tires or rims, I believe. And like I was saying, the 514 and a half garden tractors, John Deere Gator. This is one of the old wheels off of Dad's John Deere Gator. Dad's John Deere Gator. Five on four and a half by 12. Five on four and a half pattern. Dad's boat trailer. Dad's boat trailer. Five on four and a half by 12. My six by 10 trailer. My six by 10. Five on four and a half by 15. All five on four and a half. So we're gonna go ahead and jack it up, swap the axle, put some meats under it, get some ground clearance. So the reason is obviously, you know, a lot of people want height, but I want less rolling drag resistance over obstacles. You look at this simple two by or four by four. For this 18 inch tire to go over it, it's a pretty decent accomplishment. And then also, by increasing the width, we lower the ground pressure so we don't sink on soft surfaces. 
mud, sand, snow, what have you. Now we don't have any sand around here, but the principle applies. So now you can a new bigger tire. That four by four is nothing. And this will help you greatly in the off-road world. You know, same reason you put bigger tires and wheels on anything. All right, let's get started. <clears throat> All right, so our starting point is a pretty average Joe 12 inches. 12 inches of ground clearance, which is nothing special. So let's improve that. So you can see here, this is your spring under setup, where your spring is under your leaf spring. We're just going to go ahead and loosen these up, flip it to the other side of the axle, and put it back together. All right, so when doing this, you have your spring pin that goes through your spring, top and bottom. You will need to locate that in the axle so it keeps its position and the U-bolt plate on top of the leaf spring. So I am using a ratchet to tighten these. I'm not going to buzz them down with the gun. You want to tighten these U-bolts up evenly so you don't stress them to one side or the other or across the spring. Now that the axle's bolted in, go ahead and get ready to remove your old hubs. Like I said, the uh, five on four and a half bolt pattern is almost completely universal. It's what's made to be on trailers. So go ahead and pull your cotter pin. and your axle nut. Now these things aren't super tight tensioned. Greasable wheel bearings don't have a high torque preload on them, like a gear oil bearing. That's it, slide off your old hub assembly. Everything looks good in there. We're gonna get our new hub assembly with our five on four and a half pattern and the new bearings do not come greased 
They're just clean, fresh bearings. So all the old timers that I know used to just put grease in their hand and literally smush it in there and crush it in. Luckily, I have a bearing packer that I can't tell you the last time that I've used it since nothing takes taper bearings anymore. But if you don't have one, you can just smush it in. You know, back in the 90s and 80s and everything before that, everything always had greasable taper bearings. It was standard practice to, when you're doing brakes and stuff, to just pull the wheel bearing off and grease them up while you were doing it. So probably the last time that I used this is when I greased my 6x10 trailer bearings or maybe my dad's 5x8 trailer bearings and I can't even remember when that was. So, I got the grease all pushed through. Now this extra grease that I pushed through, I'm just going to take it off and put it right in the hub. It's good to have some extra grease in there. Drop in your rear bearing. So your rear bearing is in there, taper facing in, and get your new wheel seal. Now they make a tool to do this, which I do not have. So I'm gonna get my hammer and tap it in. <laughs> in do our other bearing Same thing, scrape up all that extra grease and pack it right in the center of that wheel bearing or the wheel hub. Take your outside bearing, taper in, and slide it on. your old axle nut Tighten it up. Slide your new cotter in. So, 
We've got our 18 swapped out for the 24s. We've got a spring over lift kit for free. The wheels and tires were free to me, just a sand and a paint job. The tires I found on the property, somebody dumped them off down at the corner. So for the low, low cost of free, we just made a heck of an improvement. Let's go ahead. If you can see, this was level when I jacked it up. Let's crank it up and see how much ground clearance we got now. <laughs> five and a half inches for free and it looks much better now I like it soon we'll have her out camping soon thanks for watching